in that law. Because we meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that bringeth forth its fruit in the season. His leaf shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but like the chaff that the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We set thy glories above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, as thou ordained strength. Because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man? That thou art mindful of him son of man that thou visited him For thou hast made him a little lower than the angel you even crowned him with glory and honor you made him to have dominion over the works of thy hand he even put all things under his feet. All sheep, oxen, beasts of the fields, fowls of the air, fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the pass of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter its speech and night Showeth his knowledge. There is no speech. There is no language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth and the words to the end of the world. Thou hast set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. He goeth forth in his and is from 
the end of the heaven and the circuits unto the end of it. For thou is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Let the words of my mouth meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee my strength and my redeemer the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. <clears throat> yea, though I walk through the valleys, of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of my enemies Thou anointed my head with all. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid when the wicked, my enemies, and even my foe came upon me to eat up my flesh? They stumbled and fell. Though a host shall encamp against me, the war shall rise against me, and rumors of war. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. You may be seated. If there are those who have not viewed the remains of our dearly departed brother, you have an opportunity to do so at this time before we seal the casket. There are those who have not viewed the remains, then it's your time to come right now. Some it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. For this poor man cried 
And the Lord heard yeah. him yeah. and delivered him for all his fears. Our ushers are going to pass out the program for our celebration of life for uh, Deacon Lewis Wardell. And I need to say that he lived a long and good life. Amen. Amen. I go to services all the time and I hear this statement made, but this statement is really true in Deacon Lewis Wardell's case, that we're not here because he died. But we're here because he lived. Amen. Amen. I, I said to his wife of 50 plus years and his children, as I sat with them in the hospital and in my office, I said that we are not devastated by his death because we have been impacted by his life. And when you have been impacted by someone's life, then you don't sorrow as those who have no hope. Amen. Amen. And I, I thank God for this family. I thank God for their strength that they exhibit in this hour. And it is human to shed tears. Now let me say it one more time. It is human to shed tears. I, I shed it my tears as well. But it is human to shed tears. But we are reminded that God shall wipe all tears from our eyes. Amen. What a, what a mighty God we serve. Every child of God lives for this day. Right. Every child of God lives for this day. That when they are absent from the body. And present with the Lord. Some folks when they pass you have to wonder where they went. And then you have to lie about where they went. But with Brother Deacon Lewis Wardell, you ain't got to wonder where he went. He just went home to be with the Lord. So we say good night. But we say we'll see you in the morning. Amen. I want us to keep praying for this wife, this family. Even though they know it's temporary separation, separation hurts. We are going to follow the order of service. Our urchins are giving you the order of service. And I thank God that Brother Wardell put this program together himself. Yeah. Amen. Chris was in the office. He was telling me, he said, Daddy, and Lisa said, Dad, it put this program together itself. And when y'all read it, it looks like it is a long service. When Brother Wardell put it together, he said, I don't want to have a long service. <laughs> but it looks like a long service. <laughs> but he put this service together. And, and at least we can do is honor uh, what he has taken the time to put together. So when your name is on here to do whatever is on here to do, I pray that you will come and do just that. Amen. Amen. And then he has down here, after brief expressions, he has others. And uh, he said two minutes only. And he says, get the bell. <laughs> so I'll let y'all know I have the bell right here. And, and if the others go over two minutes, I'm going to ring the bell.
can I say it like this? You can ring my bell. <laughs> what a mighty God we say. All right, we're ready. We're ready. Verse 5 says, Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on that river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand 
in his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times and half a time. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. Verse 13 says, but you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Our New Testament scripture will come from 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse 13 through the end of the chapter. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. These words of scripture have been offered as words of comfort to the family. We love you, and may God forever bless you. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, the Almighty God, the true and living God, the one and only true and living God, creator of heaven and earth, the most high, awesome, amazing, merciful God, as we come this morning before thy throne of grace, even now we come praising and worshiping thy son Jesus, for he is worthy to be praised. O oh Lord God, we come this morning before your throne of grace. We come with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanking you, dear Lord, for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Dear Lord God, we thank thee for thy love and redemption. Thank you, dear Lord, for your steadfast love and faithfulness. Thank you for your righteousness and your patience. Heavenly Father, as we come on this day, dear Lord, we come lifting up the Wardell family. Lord, we pray and asking you, dear Lord, to have mercy upon the Wardell family. 
Give them strength, dear Lord. Even better, dear Lord, give them your strength. Dear Lord, comfort them during their time of bereavement. For you are the God of all comfort. Give them understanding, dear Lord. Give them peace of mind, dear Lord God. Help them to realize that, and all of us, dear Lord, to realize that in this life, there will be some sickness, sadness, sorrows, hurt and pain and death. But help us to realize that your son Jesus, our Lord and Savior, has gone through it all. For he is the author and the finisher of our faith. So Lord, bless this family this morning. Bless them, dear Lord God, that they will be able to make it through the day. But Lord, we ask that you will fill this void. Dear Lord, only you can fill this void. So Lord, bless them, dear Lord, as they go through their time of bereavement, dear Lord. And Lord, we want to come thanking you, dear Lord, for the life that you chose to live in Brother Wardell's life. His personality, dear Lord. Dear Lord, his dedication, his devotion, his duty was all real. They all came from his heart. So Lord God, bless us this morning, dear Lord, that he leaves a legacy for his family and all of us, dear Lord, that his legacy will be love, joy, and peace. So Lord God, we come praying, asking you, dear Lord, to give us a word from on high. Dear Lord, how he was so dedicated to his profession. The brotherhood, dear Lord. He cared about men and women, boys and girls. He gave his best, dear Lord. He did your will, dear Lord, with every breath and fiber in his body. So, Lord, God bless us this morning by giving us a word from on high. Dear Lord, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light unto our pathway. Dear Lord, it is your word that give us strength. It is your word that give us hope. It is your word that give us understanding. It is your word that give us joy and peace in our hearts, dear Lord. Give us a word, dear Lord, from on high, that we will hide it in our hearts, that we may not sin against you, dear Lord. So Lord, bless this family as they go through their time of bereavement, dear Lord. Help them to realize that, that in this life, we all must go through this way to go back to home, to our home, dear Lord, that you have prepared for us on high, dear Lord. So bless and keep this family, dear Lord. Bless us and keep us, dear Lord, all in your care. For this is our prayer in our loving son, Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. of my joy all oh, that's good oh, yeah. and perfect yes. comes from you yes. you're the heart of my contentment for all I do Jesus you're the center 
of my joy.
You're the center of my joy. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. That is a testimony to Deacon Lewis Benjamin Waddell, for God was truly the center of his joy. To our pastor, Reverend Dr. Danny Davis, to all pastors and ministers on the rostrum, to our beloved, bereaved family, to all of the friends who have gathered to support the family and our Jordan Grove family, good morning. Resolution, Jordan Grove Missionary Baptist Church, the church where the love of Christ continues to be on display. January 12th, 2019. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day up on the earth, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. When I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another. Job 19, 25 through 27. Sometimes, when loved ones are called from the labors of this life to the eternal glory of the Heavenly Father, there is an undesirable void in the lives of those left behind, especially to those closely allied to the deceased. There is an emptiness that cannot be filled by human pity sympathy, or even kindness. The anguish of the heart, the cloudiness of doubt, the uncertainty of the future arises to overshadow our minds to the extent that our very being seems burdened down in despair. It is in these sad hours that the all-wise God of the universe manifests himself in spirit-like power and whispers in a still, small voice, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. These words of comfort and assurance have the power to lift the veil of sorrow and grief and restore within us the joy of our salvation, knowing that we have a Savior who cares. It is human to mourn the loss of a loved one. 
for in the flesh, we are weak. But God's wisdom and mercy strengthens us for the task ahead. And though we are parted by death from our dear brother, Deacon Lewis Wardell, we shall not mourn as those who have no hope, but rejoice in the fact that we expect to see him again in that land that the Lord has said, I go to prepare for you that where I am, there ye may be also. Be it resolved, therefore, that the pastor, officers, and members of the Jordan Grove Missionary Baptist Church share with the bereaved family the loss of their loved one. That we shall ever pray for your comfort, your welfare, and your prosperity that your future will be blessed with the desires of your heart. Through the mist of the darkness of these hours of grief and pain, you will be strengthened for surely. Earth can produce no sorrow that the joys of heaven cannot heal. Prayerfully submitted. Jordan Grove Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. Danny Davis, pastor. I would like to acknowledge resolutions, uh, and there are many, uh, which is uh, a testimony of the life that Brother Wardell lived. We praise God for that. Uh, we have a resolution from Greater Mount Olive Baptist Church Reverend Bird Lacey, Jr., pastor. Bella Vesta, missionary, Baptist Church. Uh, Reverend Jakari P. Davis, senior pastor. Reverend Calvin J. Abraham, emeritus pastor. The Church uh, at Bethel's Family, Pastor Walter August, Jr., Senior Pastor. The Independent Baptist General Association of Texas, Reverend Dr. C.L. Wallace, Moderator. Houston Citywide Baptist Brotherhood Union and Women's Uplift. Co-presidents Leroy Johnson and brothers uh, Woodrow Thomas, Dallas Citywide Brotherhood, Brother Leroy Gant, Brotherhood President, T.L. Pink National Alumni and ex Students Association. Brother Willie Giles, President. There was another. We have a resolution from Reverend Dr. Charles A. Randall and wife, Sister Lula Randall, uh, Lancaster, California. Each of these resolutions will be given to the family as for a source of strength in the days to come. Thank you.
Like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth. Proclaim kings and kingdoms, they all pass away, but there's just something about that name. That name, I call him Master, Savior Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. They all pass away, but there's just something about that name. Yeah. 
is not the way Deacon Waddell and I would do it. The usual way it went was that he would look around the congregation and he'd frown. And he'd look on the program and he'd look around the congregation and he'd frown. He'd get his program and he'd put it over his mouth and he would walk over, hunched over, and come to me. And he would say, Brother Henderson is not here. I need 10 minutes on 1 John 1 and 9. And I'd say when, he'd say now. So this is unusual. I hung around Jordan Grove Missionary Baptist Church for the majority of my life and <coughs> this right there, there it is, all right. I didn't know how close we had gotten until one day I was at Cream Burger on the corner of Elgin and Scott. And I was getting myself a hamburger, and those of you who have been there know you order your food, then you go sit down somewhere. I went and got in my car, and I sat down in the car, and I had the newspaper, and I'm reading, and time passed, three minutes turned into five minutes, five minutes turned into seven, and I'm deep into the newspaper, and I'm not really paying attention. And apparently the lady had gotten my order ready, and she was trying to get my attention, and I wasn't seeing her. And then a lady in the car, way across the parking lot, rolled her window down, looked in my direction and said, Hey, Waddell, your food ready? <laughs> I didn't realize until then how much he had influenced me and become a part of my life. He was part of so many ministries in, in Sunday school. He and Sister Waddell created, if I'm not mistaken, and taught the marriage class. Uh, new teacher training, new deacon training, vacation Bible school, men's chorus. It's going to be a little bit more orderly up there now. It's just me and Jack left to give Sharon headaches. Discipleship conference planning, finance, 
and the list goes on. Now, when I got validated yesterday when I saw the write-up in the Chronicle and I saw that there were short sentences and stuff because I had been working on this and I was finding, trying to find a way to get it in, so I just have somewhat of a highlight reel. Not really stories. If you want to hear the stories, talk to me later. And just a few phrases, a few people, places, and things. And if I don't call your name or I don't hit something recognized, you recognize, I want you to think of this as a Stevie Wonder concert <laughs> where you come to a Stevie Wonder concert and he doesn't do Fingertips Part 2 and My Sharia more. Just bear with me. Just bear with me because I can't get it all. I can't get it all. Have some quotes and have some stuff. A good marriage is like a triangle with God at the top, the husband and the wife on the sides. So the closer each of you get to God, the closer you get to one another. Barack Obama is my president. He's not my pastor. Now, if my pastor said that, I'd have to find another church. <laughs> Basketball. Bible study tools. Boy Scouts. Brother Pick. Charles Haywood. Chasing rabbits. Kali embarrassing himself and us on radio sports talk shows daily. <laughs> Dan Nellums, Earl Campbell's last game as a Houston Oiler. Find a common ground as a lead in. Frankie Hornsby, Freddie Gould. Good barbecue, good sausage. The languages of love. Hearing versus listening. His family. His family. His family. Homer Scott. How he barked. We'll move at his command. We'll soon possess the land. <laughs> to Bible school, to Bible school, to Bible school. I really think y'all should come because after all, I am the president. <laughs> I told Percy Crusoe to start selling chicken and to hire you, Moss. If you're going to fight him, you're going to have to take off that uniform that says Jordan Grove first. If you know better, you ought to do better. Johnny Foster, Maurice Soley, May the Lord watch between me and thee is not a benediction. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Meet at hymns in the old 100s. Milmon Kelly, Pierre Hornsby, T.L. Pink High School. Where y'all at? There they are. All right. Prepare somebody to take your place after you leave. Religious Intelligence, Ryrie Study Bible, Softball, Sound Doctrine. Stop acknowledging people that ain't there within his absence. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one right there. Taking pictures with the AOK -OK sign over his head. The need of the hour, the onlyest. <laughs> the president's address, warden and Spanish camp. They here. U.S. Neal, you told him, Vincent Beasley. What does the word say? Woody Smokehouse in Centerville. You can't lose your salvation. Once saved, always saved. 
You don't have to ask God to add a blessing to the reading of his word. His word is already blessed. The last time I saw Brother Waddell and he was able to stand and talk as I was leaving, he said to me, thanks for coming by. You make me feel important. And I have to turn that around because those of us who are here know that when Lewis Waddell dropped by, he made each and every one of us feel important. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there anything left? <laughs> First, we want to give honor to whom honor is due, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the pastor of this church, Dr. Danny Davis, all other pastors, and to the family, Brenda, Lisa, Christy, and Chris, I put Chris at the end for a reason. Today is a day for us to enjoy. And we are to treasure his blessing. Down on the program after Brother Moss said, long life friend. That's what it is. Long life friend. He has been my friend for over 55 to 56 years. We grew our family up together. His daughter and my daughter and Chris and Danny. We all went on vacation together. Enjoyed each other's company. And done a lot of things together as a family. Baseball, basketball, swimming. In 1976, he and I was coaching the boys from this church through the neighborhood. We went to the state and won the state championship. In 1976, Brother Lewis Waddell and I Today we have a few of those fellows that's on that state championship present today. In the name of Rockamo and Goldeen and some others. Would y'all stand please? Right. Ronald Bell is a minister. Rockamo and Goldeen and Rutledge, well, I haven't seen him in 40 years. He looked different. <laughs> you, you can say, thank you for coming. <laughs> Why, well, and I was men, but we act like boys, kids. We, we compete against one another. We like to outdo one another. He came to my house and I had a horseshoe ring in the back. And I said, come back here, let me beat you. <laughs> so we went back there and my daughter went. She said, beat him, daddy, beat him, daddy, beat him. <laughs> so I was throwing a ring. Every time I throw a ring, he would throw one. He ended up beating me. And I know that he was going to brag about it, but he didn't say nothing. <laughs> he went and got in his car and went on home. So every year that we would go to the basketball playoff in Austin, I would drive my truck and he would drive his sometime. But this time I was driving my truck. And parking was a hazard thing in Austin around the arena. So I parked in a bad spot. 
and this will tell you the work you do speaks for you. He, he beat me at horseshoe, so I parked in a bad spot and come back after the game, I had a ticket. He said, Nellam, I told you you can't park here. You, you know you're going to get this ticket. I said, yeah, I hate I got that ticket. I hate I got that ticket. The next day we went back to the game. I parked in the same place. <laughs> he said, Nellam, are you? He said, Nellam, are you crazy? You know you got a ticket. I said, give me that ticket out of the glove box. I took that ticket and put it on the windshield. <laughs> Went on into the game, come back, all the other people had tickets. I had my ticket. <laughs> we was up there from Friday to Sunday. We used that same ticket at every spot. I didn't say anything. And he said, Nellam, you think you're smart. <laughs> so I got him back. That's not all. We goes to Orlando, Florida. Uh -oh. Disney World. Yeah. With our little boys. At the gate of Disney World, there's a big sign that said, if you pack your baby in, you get in free. <laughs> so he said, where is my baby? <laughs> he grabbed up Chris. Chris a little cute little fella. Rolled his legs up and packed him in and went right on in. No problem. I came up. I said, where is my baby? <laughs> I went and grabbed Danny. He's tall and skinny. I fold his legs up. <laughs> carried him through the gate. When he got to the gate, his leg fell down. The lady looked at me and shook her head and said, go on in. <laughs> so he got me that time. In this day and time in which we live, we recognize people that gone on before us and left a legacy for us. Brother Wadia was one of those persons. He said some things, he did some things that impact our lives. Before I take my seat, I'd like to call the roll of a few of those people that have gone on before us and I can emulate his life with them. Amen. Dr. Martin Luther King says, I hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. John Kennedy says, the torch has been passed to a new generation. Barbara Jordan says, the American dream need not be deferred. Here's another man in the darkest hour of his life in the battle. If he come out of the battle, it means that he was victorious in the battle. If he stayed in, it means that he gave his life for the battle. Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. Let's go a second round. That's called John Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Finally, my brothers and sisters, 
Martin Luther King says, I hold these truths to be self evident Then he said, I have a dream that one day this nation is going to rise up and live out the true meanings of its creed. I have a dream that one day my four little children would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream that one day black men, white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics would join hand in hand, symbolize that old Negro spirit. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. Brother Lewis B. Waddell, born 1935, walked dust the street of Spanish Camp, Texas, finished his school in high school and came to Houston and made a life for himself. You know what you read about, he's here. But now, Brother Waddell, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty. He's free at last. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to Reverend Dr. Danny Davis, all the other pastors who are present, ministers of the gospel, brothers and sisters in the Lord and the Wadio family. Good morning. We come on behalf of the Houston Citywide Brotherhood and Women's Uplift Fellowship, where Brother Waddell for many years was our emeritus, our president, and then our emeritus president. He was a man who made a difference. I guess this morning we could ask the question, can anything good come out of Spanish camp? I think today you've got the answer. Yes, it can. He was someone who always placed others before him. Many of us are beneficiaries of his kindness. We, we got invitations to places to stand and teach, not because of ourselves, because of Louis Waddell. His influence is far-reaching. He's known many places. Have you ever had the liberty of being able to ride with him? He was a man, and, and uh, our co-president this morning on our call, he reminded us that he always asked questions. He had a question for all of, because he wanted to know what was our thinking about any given situation. He was a man who loved the old songs. He indeed was someone who, after the passing of President Wendell Neal, he took over, and, and that was a thing that is on our programs always called the need of the hour. So today I want to use that in saying there is a need of the hour today, and that's to remember a man who was a servant of God. He was someone who loved him. A great teacher. Great speaker. He was a great encourager. He was a great husband. After 57 years, he, we kind of call him the E.F. Hutton. Somebody that uh, when it came down to marriage and family, we listened to what he had to say. The proof was I don't remember too many times when I didn't see Brother Waddell and I didn't see Sister Waddell right there by his side. Many years before um, Brother Waddell passed and then 
Sister Wadi, her sister, they would always be together as a group of people. And, and that was an encouragement to me to see that he was somebody who was serious about God's work, but also he was serious about his relationship with his family. He loved his children. He loved, he loved his children. He talked about, Lisa, he talked about you all the time. Talked about uh, Chris and Christy. And uh, it was just something about the, uh, the Pink Foundation. He really loved that organization. Some of you have been speakers there. We, we have shared with him. And there was not many places that when he spoke, we tried to do everything that we can to get there to hear what he had to say. And so here it is today, a servant of God. One thing that he taught us many, many times in his teaching, he, he had an unusual way of coming up with themes that would last seemingly forever. You might have remembered the one, basking in the Beatitudes. We studied that for three years. <laughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Ye are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. But today, there is a scripture in that grouping that says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. He also taught us about Proverbs to live by. Many of the Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Here's one that is really, that he taught us that really meant a lot to me. He said, a just man walks in his integrity and his children are blessed after him. This is a wonderful family. These are great people. We, we miss him dearly. It's been a difficult week. Something unusual happened. Uh, I had asked uh, our co-president, Leroy Johnson, to send me a picture. And somehow, when I downloaded the picture, it is now on my desktop. And I have tried to figure out how Brother Waddell's picture I got on my desktop, but you know this morning when I had prayer, and we're celebrating, um, this is our 200th Saturday of having our prayer gathering for Citywide. Uh, it, it began with him, and we, it's continued. But in, when I looked at that picture today, it seemed like he was saying, it's well with my soul. He's saying that there is still work to do. God still expects great things from us. So I say to you today, I tell you as a mentor, as a, as a father, as a husband, as someone who really loved the Lord, and as a teacher, I know uh, you will agree with me here at this church, he believed in team teaching. Have you ever tried team teaching? That's not easy. To have two people in the same room that are both assigned to teach and they both need a few minutes to teach. Well, I have to admit today, we still haven't gotten it right. But it's something that he believed in. He believed in giving you an opportunity and he believed in you doing all that you can do. So in final tribute to him, I'm going to ask all of the brothers and sisters of the Houston Citywide if they would stand with me. All pastors, if you're here. You just stand right where you are, those who are here. Got Reverend Carlos Washington up in the balcony. Uh, and then I'm going to ask all of our national brothers, all of our state, national, local brothers, if you would stand. All of our brotherhood men, if you would stand. Amen. I need you to remain standing for just one second because we, we want to do something. There's not a time that 
Brother Waddell and we gather together, there's something that we do at the end of every fellowship. It's a way of recognizing who we are and the kind of men that we are. We have a motto. A motto that we share. We share it in a way that is firm. Of telling people what kind of men that we really are. And so today I ask that you would join in with me. And if, if there are others who would like to join us, any other men who would like to stand who know this motto with us, if you'd like to join in with us, we welcome you to stand and, and join in with us. I see some brothers from Independent, other places, if you would join. The motto goes like this, teach the word in the home with a consecrated heart, following the footsteps of the Savior, leading all men to God. Teach the word in the home with a consecrated heart, following the footsteps of the Savior, leading all men to God. Teach the word in the home with a consecrated heart, following the footsteps of the Savior, leading all men to God. We dearly love you. We thank you. God be with you. Amen. Giving praises to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from whom all blessings flow yeah. to Pastor Davis and all the ministers here representing and to Sister Wardell and her family, friends and loved ones. It's an honor to be standing before you this morning on behalf of the Independent Brotherhood Auxiliary as the president. I met Brother Lewis Wardell in December of 2008 at my very first Brotherhood workshop for Independent. And afterwards, uh, I talked with him briefly and let him know that I was newly in the Brotherhood and had been elected president at Greater Mount Zion and that I needed help. And he gave me his phone number and he said, call me. Well, I think I wore his phone out because <laughs> he every time I look around, I needed to call him for something, but he always answered. Brother Water and I be quickly became friends. And he was my friend, he was my mentor, He's my encourager. You know, he always had an uplifting word for me to keep me going forward. And one thing, until this day, I always quote Brother Wardell in Brotherhood Workshop. He always told me that a good Brotherhood brother was always ready to expound on God's word. So I always use that to encourage those that I ask to be on program. And I'm not going to be before you. There's a lot been said about Brother Water. But there's one thing that stood out to me that Brother Water did not only talk to talk, but he walked to walk. He was a giant among men with shoes that not one man could fill. You know, he was greatly known throughout the nation as a godly man, a family man, a man that loved people, loved God's people. And so wherever we went, we always had a good time when Brother Wardell was around. He kept us laughing, too. And there's one thing I'm going to tell you, one quick story, and I'm going to sit down. Uh, me and Brother Wardell, Sister Wardell, and my wife went to a national convention in Florida a few years back. And his daughter said, uh, whatever you do, don't let Brother Wardell drive at night. <laughs> so I said, oh, okay, 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 I'll I, I go along with that, and I didn't let him drive. Now, on the way back, you know, and going, he, he was a constantly asking me that, I, you know, he was ready to help me with the driving. So when we got to Louisiana, I said, well, I'm going to let Brother Wardell drive. That was the scariest time <laughs> I've ever had. <laughs> and Lisa, you should have said, don't let him drive day or night. <laughs> uh, uh, Sister Wardell, may the Lord bless and keep you and your family in perfect peace. It's my prayer. Thank you. God is good. I'm Albert Black from Austin, Texas. I am just so thrilled to be here today. 
representing the Missionary Baptist General Convention of Texas Brotherhood Auxiliary, Dr. G.V. Clark, who is our moderator, and he would like me to say to you, Sister Wardell, we had another funeral going on in Austin today, but he was going to ride down with me and Kathy today to be at this service, but he could not make it. But his prayers and his love is with you and the family. To this wonderful pastor, to this wonderful family, to all of you, our hearts are heavy today, but God is still good. You've heard so many of these brothers talk about Brother Wardell as we travel the state and the nation. Lewis Wardell's name will always be written in high places. I stand today as a better brother because of Lewis Wardell. I'm thankful to God that I got a chance to know Lewis Wardell. Lewis Wardell will tell you what's right whether you wanted to hear it or not. And if you was not doing it right, he's not like some of us. Wait and tell you afterwards and talk behind your back afterwards. He would pull you to the side, either call you up and say, Brother Black, this is how you should have done that. So you can appreciate true folks and God-fearing folks. As, my, as I take my seat today, I know Brother Wardell is one thing I knew. He loved his family. He loved his church. And he loved his pastor. So as I drive back to Austin this evening, I want to just think what has been said today and go back and take a little of what Brother Waddell has left with so many of us and make this world a better place. Because we need great men, great women in our churches that will live the life and not just talk it. God bless you. To Sister Waddell and members of the Waddell family, to clergy that are present, and to this mass audience that's here uh, today. Uh, I'm just delighted to be here for a number of reasons. I came in on last night, and uh, one of the reasons I'm glad to be here is the 60 degree weather when we got six to eight inches of snow back in Kansas City. When I was a youth growing up at the Metropolitan Baptist Church in Kansas City, we used to sing this song, Come ye disconsolate, where'er ye languish. Come to the mercy seat, fervently kneel. Here bring your wounded hearts, here tell your anguish, for earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Confirmation of this hymn is found in 2 Corinthians where Paul writes that he comforts us in all our affliction. And so I want to encourage this family to take your concerns to the Lord for he knows your grief and he loves you and will provide you with love surrounding you that you may know his inner peace. I do want to acknowledge the president of our National Baptist Convention, Dr. Samuel Talbert, uh, who is not here, and I know I'm uh, violating one of those uh, things that Ellis told us earlier. <laughs> but let me also acknowledge uh, the presence of the former president of the senior women of our National Convention, Sister Alice Thomas, who is here today. <laughs> and many of the men here in Texas who serve on our national uh, convention roster. I want to thank you all for being here. 
Now, Brother Waddell lived a long life, more than that that was promised as three score and ten. He also lived a life commendable as evidenced by the many men whose lives he touched in his local church, the Houston Citywide Brotherhood, the Missionary Baptist Convention of Texas, and the National Baptist Convention Brotherhood. I encourage those of you who mourn his loss to put your hope and trust in our Lord Jesus. During the more than 40 years that I knew Brother Waddell, he was always an avid Bible scholar, an encourager, and challenged us to do our best for the Lord. Brother Waddell grew up in the Brotherhood under the tutelage of men like Ira Clark, Homer Scott, and many others, and he did his best to promote the causes of Brotherhood in their memory and also to the glory of God. Brother Waddell was a great encourager, and he could have been president of the National Brotherhood, but he chose to take the humble route and stay in the background that he might help to promote others. And so when I became president, he said to me that, Brother Lawton, I'm with you, and whenever you need anything, just give me a call. And so whenever I was given an assignment by former President Thurston or President Talbert to come up with programs and ideas, the first person that I would call was Lewis Waddell. And Lewis had a very good way of filling in all the details for some of the global uh, aspirations that I had. When I needed projects to be completed, I'd call on Lewis Waddell. I remember his coordinating the writing of many of our lessons, particularly in 2010 when he coordinated our lessons from the book of Matthew, I'm, I'm sorry, the book of uh, Nehemiah. I chose him to do that. When we needed to revise our operations manual, I called upon Brother Waddell uh, to do that. And he did them uh, with great zeal, and you knew that he was going to do a complete job. And so I'm very appreciative of the contributions that he made. Another thing that Brother Waddell had, you could talk to Brother Waddell, and I was telling Woodrow last night, you know, Waddell had a way of talking to you and coming up with ideas, and he had a way of framing it so that you thought it was your idea, but it was really his. But I appreciate the great work that, that he did. Whenever I would come to Houston, I never had to worry about transportation. If I called Lewis, he was always there. I remember a number of years ago when Brother Maynard Harvey and I were coming from our national convention, which had met in Los Angeles, and we had a four or five hour layover here in Houston. It was during the time that Homer Scott was still alive but very ill. And I called Waddell to ask how Homer was doing and he said, where are you? And I said, well, Brother Harvey and I, we're at the airport. And he said, how long are you gonna be there? I said, we got about a four or five hour layover here. He said, hold on, I'll be out there and I'll take you to see Brother Scott. And he did that. I remember on another occasion when we were meeting uh, in Galveston for a area workshop, Brother Waddell drove back and forth uh, every day in order to make sure that the program that he and I had talked about was fully implemented. And so I just appreciate his humility and I appreciate the impact that he has had on my life and the lives of many others who are here today. And I'm sure that Brother Waddell would appreciate all of the kind words that have been expressed on his behalf, but I know within his heart the words that he is most appreciative of hearing was that word from God that said, servant, well done. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
first of all, um, giving honor to God, um, the good Reverend Doctor Danny Davis, um, my good friend Gaidi Burgess, and my very very good friend Dave Roberts. Um, thank you to all of you for taking time out of your day to come show my family um, some support. Um, we, we definitely appreciate it. Um, talk to you guys a little bit about my dad. Um, you know, over the years, my dad has been uh, a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, you know, I've been to several funerals, you know, funerals for family members, funerals for friends, for classmates, for people I barely knew, people I didn't even know at all. I always seem to have a kind word to say. Uh, you know, may God be with you during this time of your bereavement. Um, our prayers are with you. Never really quite understanding the depth of the pain That, that is associated with a day such as this. But see, now their pain is my pain, and their, their loss is my loss. The grief that they feel, I now feel. This ain't my idea. <laughs> Being up here doing this, this is not my idea. Y'all already heard, he put this together. He did this. This ain't <laughs> This is not my thing. It's not what I do. Karaoke? Hey, I get good. I, I kill it. This, this is not my thing. He put this together a long time ago. I, I actually heard, heard Christy talking about, hey, Blake. Wow. I actually heard Christy talking about, um, she saw daddy doing this on the computer one day. She walked by, he was on the computer putting it together. She got mad at him and made him stop. <laughs> um, his way of handling this whole thing to the very end, his way of saying, I got it, I don't need y'all worrying about that, I got it. Um, my dad was a brother to some, you know, he was a co worker to others, he was a boss to many. Um, you had Mr. Waddell, um, you had Uncle Cookie, you had Deacon Waddell, yeah, yeah, yeah. you had Daddy, you had Papa. Huh. Mr. Waddell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Home Clark fell in love with Mr. Waddell. Eight <laughs> suit? Hey, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> But it, it, it didn't start there. It, it didn't start in Harm Clark. It started right here in Third Ward. Right here in Third Ward, it started. We lay claim to my dad in Harm Clark. He finally got the memo and uh, he, he ventured his way to the Clark and made roots there. I know many of us can remember, however, going in Waddell's when my dad would go and take pictures of different events. You go in and he have your picture all up at the top of the thing. If you played football, basketball, ran track, was in the band, whatever your thing was, you can go in Waddell's and your picture was there. He made the decision at some point to start selling boudin in the store. My goodness, if I could find that boudin right now. Sold almost 250 sticks of boudin a week. People came from far and long to get that boudin. It was delicious. Then you have Deacon Waddell. In, in this church, 
is, is kind of where it all started. I can remember my mom sitting in the choir. Well, I don't remember. She told the story. But I, 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 I'm not that old. I don't know. But, but, I, but I, can, I can remember my mom telling the story. She was in the choir. And um, she, she saw my dad walk in with me. And she hurriedly got out of the choir stand and went down. She said, well, let me go get my baby. Well, come to find out, my dad had my clothes on backwards. <laughs> the little baby clothes, the buttons go in the back. <laughs> he thought it was a suit. He put the buttons in the front. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My daddy drove the church bus. Every Sunday, my daddy would drive the church bus. He'd get up, he'd drive from Alameda Plaza all the way over here, pick up the church van, drive all over the city. He'd pick us up in Alameda Plaza first, me and Corey and Nikki, and we'd go buy Shipley's Donuts. <laughs> By the time we got to church, well, <laughs> It was Shipley Donuts. I mean, you can imagine there wasn't many left for people in Sunday school, but he drove that bus all over the city. And after church, he drove it back, dropping people off. That was his thing. Then we have Coach Waddell. My daddy was my first baseball coach. Little League Baseball taught me to be the pro at baseball that I am today. <laughs> um, my dad was so involved in Little League Baseball, he became the president of the league, um, working hand in hand with my good friend P.J. Dels and, and his parents who are no longer with us as well. You already heard he took some cats from Third Ward and from Harm Clark, and they put a basketball team together and won state championships for this church. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, do it. I mean, I mean, hey, you know. But to understand that, you got to understand my dad. He was an athlete. You know, my dad played baseball. My dad played basketball. My dad ran track. Had state records in track. Um, you know. My dad, <laughs> one time um, we had this, this dog named Prince. <laughs> Prince was a great dog, but he was ignorant. <laughs> Doberman Pinscher, beautiful animal, beautiful, strong Doberman. Look at him, you, if you didn't know him, you'd look at him and you'd swear he's gonna, just a beautiful animal. But he was retarded, he was crazy, he was, he was a crazy dog. <laughs> always getting out, always around the neighborhood. So finally, you know, he got out and we, we finna go get him. You know, me and daddy got in, got in the truck, we go and find Prince. We riding all over Alameda Plaza, we riding all, we finally spot Prince. My daddy jumped, he throw the car in park, he get out. He running. Now I'm getting out too, but I ain't running that fast. <laughs> he running, I'm running, we running, Prince running. We all running. <laughs> We're going down Weathering Heights. We get to the corner right there by the bayou. Prince hit that corner. My dad hit that corner. I'm coming again. <laughs> to be. The dude was quick. He, he was quick. I don't know. Them little legs was gone, boy. <laughs> and as we went through the driveway of, 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 of um, Chavez and house right down the corner, there was an oil slick on the, on the concrete where the, the car was parked and daddy didn't see it. He hit that corner. He hit that oil slick. <laughs> and he went one way. And my daddy wore a toupee at the time, so. <laughs> 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 
My daddy went tumbling one way, the toupee went tumbling another way. So by the time I get there, I'm picking up hair, I'm seeing if he all right. Well, little did he know at the time that he had he gashed his knee wide open. It was it was down to the white meat, and uh, of course had to end up getting that taken care of. Then we got Uncle Cookie. We got Uncle Cookie. It ain't Cookie. What is it? It's Coogie with a G. We ain't gonna talk about why and when and who started that and coogie. Somewhere along the line, us folks, the way we talk, we changed it <laughs> to cookie. But my daddy didn't care, you know, he, he rolled with it, you know. Um, all my cousins had jobs. My daddy gave my cousins jobs. They were working either at Waddell's. They was working at the barbecue place. Gave my cousin Blue a fully restored, what year was that car? 67 Mustang, fully restored. He also gave his best friend one of those as well, um, brother Melvin Russo, who's no longer with us as well. Thirteen years ago, he became Papa. <sighs> to my, I don't know if y'all, y'all on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> These two kids are amazing. Yes, they are. And he got the opportunity to see them in all of their az- amazementness. That's mine, that's mine, Ama- amazementness. <laughs> For they are truly amazing and, and they knew that he loved them. They knew that he was supportive of them in everything they did. He was there at every performance, he was there up until he couldn't be there, he was there. He was there. The best thing he was was daddy. Ever present. Supportive in all things. Whatever we wanted to do, we didn't get to do it. <laughs> there was a line. <laughs> there was a line. I didn't necessarily knew I grew up in the ghetto till I got to college. <laughs> Took a sociology class and read the definition and was like, dude, that's the clock right there. <laughs> but he was an old school parent, man. He, 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 he took his kids very seriously. Saved my life, actually. Um, a couple years ago I put it out how how my dad was the one who noticed that I had childhood cancer my dad was the one who paid attention enough to me to know when I wasn't right as I stated he was my, my baseball coach and he noticed when I would run and would hold my side or when I would lean over, you, you all right? Yeah, I'm okay, all right. He knew I wasn't all right, told me to lay down. Let me look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Got to poking and prodding and found a lump on my side and went to the doctor, found out it was cancer. But that's who he was, ever present. 
<laughs> some friends of ours was riding one day, me and Dave and Oric and Demo. We riding. I can't remember where we were, but we were nowhere close to home. Looked in the rearview mirror, this dude behind us. <laughs> How, what, why are you over here? What's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was a firm disciplinarian, firm but fair. Said what he meant, meant what he said. You know, he had a knack of saying, don't do that, with emphasis on the do. He said, don't real soft, don't. And then the do would come. And you knew that if I did that, whatever that was, <laughs> wasn't going to be good. One time I had curfew, and uh, I broke curfew. Something I've done many times. Um, I'm not, you know, I broke curfew, you know. Um, this particular night, I. <laughs> I, um, it was pretty late. It was probably well after three in the morning. Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow, yeah, wow. wow. Uh, yeah, it was probably well after three. Um, yeah, I was early for the, for the next day. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had this thing I would do when it was that late. I'm telling on myself now. I had this thing I would do. I would uh, I'd hit the corner real fast. I had a stick shift automobile. I had a little Mazda truck. It was nice. I'd hit that corner. I'd turn my truck off, put it in neutral, and just coast. <laughs> turn the lights off. I'd just coast. I'd just, put, just coast right up there to the house. I'd turn off everything, everything. And then I'd sit there, wait and see if I see some lights come on in the house. I'd sit there. Okay, no lights. I'm good. Went to the back. We used to have a dog named Chucky. Chucky was a beast. Chucky was Chucky. Chucky was the neighborhood. Chucky used to walk my Aunt Artie home every night. He would walk Artie home, make sure she got in the house. He'd turn around and come on back. So Chucky was in the backyard. I went to the backyard. I'm finna sneak in the house. I'm not going through the front door. That door make too much noise. I'm not going that way. I'm going through the back. Chucky sees me. He starts to bark. Tell Chucky to be quiet. He does. Very obedient dog. I get in the garage. <laughs> I strip down to my underwear. Oh, wow. Because the thought is, if somebody do wake up as I'm coming in the house, I'm just going to the kitchen to get something to drink. <laughs> I ain't got no socks on. I ain't got no shoes on. Draws. So I put the key in, I ease the key, I turn it real slow so it won't pop. It clicks. I open the door. I open the door real slow, don't make no noise. I come in the house. I'm walking like a ninja. <laughs> I pull the door closed. Lock it, make sure it's locked. Turn around right there. My daddy leaned on the car like this. He, he leaned on the wall looking dead at me. He just let me go through that whole thing. He let me walk in the door naked. He let me turn around, lock the door, and he's standing there looking at me. He said, Boy, where you been in your drawers? He loved my mama. He loved my mama. Um, I mean, he loved my mama. Uh, made no demands on my mama whatsoever. Didn't require anything of my mom. Told her I married you not to be my maid, not to be my cook. I married you because I love you. 
I heard my Uncle Sonny say something a few days ago. He didn't, probably didn't know I heard him, or he didn't know he dropped a nugget. He said to my dad, we were all sitting around, and he said, you know, Cookie, he said, when you ask me, he said, when you ask me if you can have my sister's hand in marriage, Never would have thought it had been no 57 years. You know, it's these stories that I have. You know, I can go on and on. I, you know, I got a few more I can't tell. Uh, it's a pot in the truck. Can't talk about that. Can't talk about that. I can't talk about the <laughs> I can't talk about the pies that he bought and can't talk about that. Them two pies. You know, we all have stories. I have mine. Lisa has hers. Christy has hers, the twins. Mama, you have more than all of us. We've reached a point where now we are experiencing the worst part about this life that we live. And that is knowing that eventually everything dies. The worst thing about losing someone that is close to you or someone that you love is the knowing that you eventually will. We are born with innocence, but then as we grow, we are cursed with this question. Why? 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 Little kids, why? Why are we here? Is it all just chaos, or is there some method to this madness? Is there any answer to this disdain. Now, if and only if you are one of the lucky ones, you will at some point probably find the answer to this question. That the curse is lifted. Replaced with the gift of certainty. So remember, when you're faced with that question, that question of uncertainty, this curse. Remember that you're not alone. You're not alone. God is here to help. I say to everybody out here, when it's your time to mourn, When it's your time to have the worst day of your life. Yeah. Remember, God is here. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Here to stand in the gap between you and the chaos. Yes. God is your spiritual first responder. Ready and willing to answer the call. That's his purpose. That was daddy's purpose. I pray everyone here finds theirs. Thank you. And everyone that uh, Brother Wardell placed on program has spoken well today. Amen. And what they said needed to be said. Amen. Amen. We understand that um, uh, people have a lot to say. Um, and what they say helps this family. Uh, helps every one of them. Helps the, the wife. Helps the children grandchildren and all of the relatives. 
helps the sister-in-law and the brother-in-law, helps the nephew, prof, helps uh, Professor Jason over there. Amen. Amen. I saw him get a smile on his face because of what everybody has said. Uh, Deacon Wardell also left some time on the program for others to have a comment. And uh, if there are others here who would like to have a comment, then you need to make your way to my right. If there are others here that want to make a comment now, now, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <clears throat> Now, let me tell you, y'all don't have as long as everybody else had. All you have is two minutes. Amen. And I, I'm going to stand right here, and I'm going to ring the bell when you go over two minutes. I have a digital clock on the pulpit that lets me know exactly when you go over two minutes. Okay, let me... All right, right after that brother right there, that's the last one. Amen. That's, you want to say something? Sonny, you want to say it? Sonny, I will, I will let you say it. Now, this is, this is. Turn this on. This is the brother-in-law. And uh, he say he want to say something, and he don't want to come up there. And since he's going to be right here, he ain't going to be that long. Yeah. <laughs> Give it all praise to God. And Dr. Davis and everything. I just wanted to say about my brother-in-law, like uh, uh, Chris said, when he asked for uh, Lisa's hand, I had no idea that he was, they were going to stay together as long as they did. Why? Because they both was young, and I felt like they hadn't got their run out yet, you know. And I also told him, too, I said, now, you can't raise her. She's already raised. What I mean by that is I don't want you to put your hands on her. Because if you do, you're going to have to answer to me. And if he ever put his hands on them, I'd never know anything about it. You know, and they stayed together for this many years. And he loved his wife. He loved his kid. And most of all, he loved his pastor. Yes. And he loved his church. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because when they was getting ready to renovate this church, I was at his house several times. And Reverend David called and had to get information from him. <laughs> and he said, well, I'll get it for you, Reverend. Yeah. You know, and everything like that. That man, that was a smart man. Yeah, it was. And he loved his church and he loved his pastor. Yeah. Rev. Davis, I'm sorry if I if I no, didn't. Good. <laughs> no, you're okay. good. You're good. Okay. All right. The time on the on my digital clock says 104. To God be the glory, to Reverend Davis and to the other uh, pastors on the roster and to the bereaved family. I stand today because a couple, about a month ago, I was his Facebook friend and he asked all of us to tell him what, how did he know us or what did we have in common, I guess he was saying. But I respond back to him and said, I remember you because you used to, we used to travel together. We went all over the United States to different conventions. And Brother Wardell was a true Christian man. He was honorable, not just because he loved God, he loved God's people. It was Aunt B and I and her niece and myself, he would travel us all around the country. And at that time, he was a very good driver because we drove all the way to Nashville, Tennessee, nonstop. And we drove all the way back nonstop in many other places. We never, ever had to check into a hotel. So he, when we would end the trip, I would ask, how much did I owe? He says, nothing. I was going that way anyway. It's very few Christians will respond to you that way. And so that's why I can truly say he was a true Christian man. And he would always treat us just like family. And that's what I want to say to you today, Brenda. 
He always was a very, very true Christian man in all ways, and he always respected A.B. and myself, and I want to thank you for that, and he also made room for me in the Brotherhood City of... <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> Amen. Giving honor to God, minister of the roster. My uncle was the best. He loved us. And on behalf of my brothers and my sisters from down in Warren, Texas, well, I don't know what I would have done without him. We don't know. He was always there in time of need and just to encourage us. And I had another uncle, uh, mother on my mom's side, my dad's side, uh, Wendell Neal. And he was a doctor, professor, Dr. Wendell Neal, and U of H professor. And so one day my uncle was talking, and he said, man, your uncle's so heavy over there at Lily Grove. And he said, uh, you going to be like him? And I looked at my uncle, and I said, no, uh, I'm going to be just like you. Mm -hmm. And like Chris said, uh, he gave me a 1967 Mustang. I'm talking about it wasn't raggedy. I'm talking about, man, it, it could roll with the best of them off the showroom flow. And I always took pride in I was his favorite nephew. And uh, he was good. He, he paid my way through college. I came up to TSU, and he was paying my way. I got my, my records and my grades. And he said, how your records are, Bernal? I said, mm, they ain't looking too good on probation, right? I was on, so I did it again a couple of semesters. And every time I, he'd come, they asked me, yeah. Oh, they're not looking too good, huh? I'm still on probation. Then the next time he say, he shook his head. Mm, I think we're going to try something different. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, I just thank God for my uncle, man. And he was good to me. He was good to us. And he loved his family. If I could just be half or close to the man and the Christian and the father and the husband, he was, I'd be satisfied. And I'm going I'm to I'm, I'm say, when I would go places with my uncle, he would say, let him in. he say, let him in. i say, when he get to heaven and I'll be there at the gate, I hope he say, let him in. I love y'all, my family. Hey, brother. Good afternoon. My name is Hank Allen, and I'm from off the prayer. That's uh, Sonny, know what I'm talking about. That's way out there in Spanish camp. Mm. Come from Spanish camp, from the prayer. And that's why Coogie and Sonny and Susie and Mr. Fred and Miss Sarah come from. You know, I know where Coogie come from, where we come from. I know the story. And I know why he's risen to. Man, I'm proud of my friend. He was a wonderful guy. I tell you what, if ever there was a leader born in Spanish camp, Coogie Waddell was that leader. He was a leader when it was three of us. And he was a leader that led us in playing all kind of games. He, he could imitate Superman. He said, cheers I am and be Captain Marvel. You know, so anyway. <laughs> We followed Coogie. A little bit about his athletic abilities. He was a great athlete. Yeah. I think if he had my size, he would have been pro professional if he wanted yeah. to be. Yeah. But I think what he accomplished is greater than being a professional athlete. He done so much for people. I don't know any professional athletes that do that. And I think his name would be all over this country, and I'd stay there for a while. So he has risen to a great height. But, you know, I just, like, I just marvel at Lewis Benjamin Waddell. I didn't know his name was Lewis Benjamin Waddell for a lot of years. I thought he was Coogie Waddell mm -hmm. and Sonny Waddell and Susie Waddell. <laughs> so I, I really, truly didn't know he was. Uh, and i tell you what, just well, a couple of more things I'd like to mention. He was a great guy. <laughs> Good morning. We're here today 
to celebrate the life of Mr. Waddell, affectionately called Cookie, an honorable, upright, just man. Aw, oh, sookie, sookie. <laughs> he was a mild-mannered man. He never made a fuss. My 47 years, one of two fathers on the street, I never heard cuss. He was active at church. The Lord is very well pleased. After, after memorizing the books of the Bible, he'll give us a reward, a coupon book for Mickey D's. <laughs> Miss Waddell was cool. He did his thing. He gave us rise. We would pile up in this, we would pile up, and he, wait, I'm sorry. We'd pile up for vacation Bible school in his classic Mustang. He earned a living a businessman with his own store across the street from Worthing, I mean across the street from Madison. Every Marlin they had to adore. One thing that really threw me for a loop, his store was the only store where I could find cream of shrimp soup. <laughs> they penned the song, What a Man, What a Man, What a Mighty Good Man. I no longer had to drive to Lake Charles. He sold the exact same boudin. <laughs> Mrs. Waddell, you'll never allow, you never allow pushing and shoving. I know you're gonna miss your boo and all those years of loving. Lisa, Chris, and Christy, I don't know what to say. You're gonna miss your dad. He's up in heaven. Hip, hip, hooray! <laughs> Mr. Waddell lived a full life. His time was well spent. He received his word after God said to him, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. I'm going to talk real fast. Real fast. Uh, to Dr. Davis and to all assembled here today, good afternoon. Um, I'm glad that I was taught, Dr. Davis, that it's not always what you know, but who you know. Um, I've passed a church there in Eagle Lake, uh, Greater Mount Olive Steps Church, uh, and where Deacon Alex Warich happens to be the chairman of our deacon board, which happens to be the brother of Sister Brenda Wydell which happens to be the wife of Brother Lewis Wydell. That's why I say it's not what you know, but who you know. We were struggling with our brotherhood um, during that time when I got there, and, and Deacon Worry said, my brother-in-law is real big and good in the brotherhood. You want me to get him to come? I said, sure. He came. He came, and he helped us to rebuild our brotherhood, and when he left there, we were all doing the brotherhood motto. Just want to say, God bless you, continue to pray for you and your family, that we love you. At Great Amount of thank you for this time. Amen. 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 Good afternoon. My name is Roy Alon Sr. I was born and raised in Spanish camp. Walter L. was born and raised in Spanish camp. And my family and Walter L.'s family had a great bond good friends. I want to tell a short story and I'll be finished. <laughs> Spanish camp, Spanish camp, by the way, is a farming community. And at some time, you, you don't, you lose a crop. So, what else family, Cookie, we call him Cookie, and my family got together and went on a cotton pit. And in order to do that, you got to have a close bond. So one day after we finished doing what we do on the cotton pick, we were sitting around the fire making, you know, uh, supper and all that. And Waddell wouldn't eat his food. And Miss Sarah said, he's not going to eat that food unless you put some sugar on it. <laughs> he had to put sugar on his food. So I'm here to say, that I can justify on all the deeds that are printed in this program, and I read every line. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you. You know, uh, Brother Wardell, and I listed that this morning, Deacon Wardell, Brother Wardell, well, we communicated as boys. We was in the same class, same age, played basketball together. He was a captain, I was a co-captain of a high school. So we had a lot of fun, and we kin folks. Big brother, little brother, Sonny. I had a brother named Albert, and we grew up. Families the same makeup. Pick cotton, pull corn to make a living. We didn't hardly know what class we were in. I'm still straightening my, my age. But anyway, <laughs> that's the way it was. But it's not where you came from, it's where you're going. That's right. I remember when he told me, he said, hey, him, they tell me, you became principal over at that school. I said, yeah, well, you know I'm retarded. He said, can you handle it? I said, heck, you know, we came on the principal that would break our neck if we didn't. So I don't have a choice, you know. So it says, it says 3,000 kids out there. I said, well, it's going to be a bulldog fight because I'm going to run the school because we came from that kind of environment. We had a principal that admired his students and demanded excellence, T.O. Pink. Wardell started his legacy. But Wardell was a gentleman that was standing in the class by himself. You know, his wife, you know, back in those days, the girls wore that Vaseline and Royal Crown. You could smell them down the hall. And Wardell was popular. A tremendous athlete. This stuff we got Ryan Houston talking about hardening him. What else could do that stuff? I'm telling you, the boy was, he was an excellent athlete, no doubt about it. And I told him, we went up to Eagle Lake to play and went on the corpus. Oh, we wanted Yates and Wheatley, but we was from the country. So they didn't give a darn. So what else would whoop their head? That, that was our thinking. And I told him, I said, boy, that girl like you. You think so? Oh, and I said, well, I ain't never had a girlfriend, but I believe she liked you. <laughs> And I, and the, oh, in those God. days, you couldn't touch a girl because she'd tell her mama on you, get your hands off of me. I said, but she liked you. And that union formed and went on down the line, and great children were born from it. Thank you, God. Bless you. <laughs> I'd like to thank Miss Waddell, Chris. I'm a member of the basketball team that won the state championship for Coach Waddell. He always be coached us. And we'd like to thank you all for sharing Coach Waddell with us. Because two nights a week, we had a father. It was no secret that growing up here in Third Ward, it was a fatherless neighborhood. So Coach Snellum and Coach Waddell were like a father to all our guys. And every time I would see Coach Wilder, he would always give me a big hug. Goldeen, how's it going? And I remember meeting him about two months before I was going to get married. I said, Coach, I'm about to get married. He said, man, that's a good thing. He said, my wife and I at the time, he said, my wife and I have been married for 30 years. That goes to show you marriage won't kill you. <laughs> he said, but it'll make you wish you was dead sometime. <laughs> So, so, of course, why don't have a sense of humor? You know, everybody's saying how serious he was, but he did have a sense of humor, yeah? And, and I thank Coach Waddell because at the time it was Coach Waddell and Coach Nellum. Coach Nellum's not in here, is it? Coach Nellum used to ride with his radio on a country station. Favorite song, Old Sneaky Snake. Nobody wanted to ride with Coach Nellum because he invented Don't Touch a Black Man's Radio. You know, Coach Waddell was cool before we knew what cool was. You know, he let us listen to it. But I remember seeing Coach Waddell, and I never knew, thanks to you, Chris, that there was a toupee. <laughs> I thought why Coach Waddell had a good grade of hair. <laughs> and I saw Coach Waddell, and he was bald. And I had been struggling when I was going to go bald. I said, if Coach Waddell can do it, I can too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My name is Otilio Randall. I'm from the Glen Flora area. My parents came from Spanish camp. 
uh, and Joe Randall and J.C. Randall, all from Spanish Camp area. Kuke has been my friend. He's a cousin. He's one of the best friends I ever had. We, we uh, went to school together. We took courses together in graduate school uh, and in high school. Uh, we competed for who was the best student. He, he was the best student, I think, because he used to leave, come to school late in the beginning of the year, sometimes a month late. But it wouldn't take him long to become the first in the class. Uh, later on, when I was in medical school, I got a call that he had something wrong with him. And I became very upset and read everything I could find concerning that illness. And it, at that time, most of the patients died. And 40 years later, there's no signs of it in him. He got well. And so, and then I had a, I went to see him the other day in the hospital. And uh, his daughter said to me, uh, I saw some letters that we wrote each other. And uh, there was a very interesting thing a few years ago. But he got over that. Is this Sonny? We had a relationship as a patient thing. But the best thing I want to say is that Cookie was extremely bright, could do almost anything. And he would give you advice on what to say. I remember I had some girl who was tracing me, and I said something <laughs> negative about her. And what else came to me, he said, uh, why are you doing that? Why are you saying that? She just want to tell you that she likes you a certain way. <laughs> you know, and he, he was always giving that kind of a stuff. And anyway, I don't have too much to say. That's all I wanted to say is that right. we, are, we are lifelong <laughs> friends. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Pastor Davis. To the Waddell, Sister Waddell and the Waddell family. Uh, I have a piece of paper that I'm supposed to read for my mom. In all sentiments, I won't read it verbatim, but what she really wanted to express was this, that we are praying for you and your family. Um, we are diligently excited about what you've allowed your husband to be to us because he was an inspiration unto me when I came over to this church. He took me in. I mean, he took me to brotherhood places everywhere. We went to small churches, big churches, in the woods. We went everywhere. We became real good friends. And he taught me a very valuable lesson, and one I didn't get until I got here today. Um, he taught me if you're going to do something for God, give it your very best. He deserves your best. He's talking about a brotherhood man being prepared to be um, able to share the word of God in a time of season. He said, you can do it. You can always do it. I used to always feel like I couldn't do it, but he encouraged me every time, and I always did. I remember the last time, one of the last time we was together, we was in the choir stand. We was in the men choir stand. And uh, Brother Waddell says, have you found a job yet? I say, no, Brother Waddell, I'm still in between jobs. Brother Waddell just, you know, very discreetly reached into his pocket. And um, he pulled out some money, he put it in my hand. He said, now put that in your pocket and don't, and don't spend it all up. And um, I finally went to the restroom when I had a chance to get a break, and it was $5. I mean, he gave me a good $5. <laughs> 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 and so I came in, to, I didn't understand what that meant at the time. Uh, if, you're in the, if, you're, if you're in the body of Christ, you're supposed to give it your best shot on everything that you can in the Lord. I mean, God gave it to you. God is depending on you to do it. And um, he shared with me that story I learned when I stepped upstairs. I was thinking about that $5 and what value does that have on my lesson learned from him. He said, once you get out on your, in your Christianhood, give everything that you got. But once you get it, your money, don't you give it all away. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dr. Davis and to all of these preachers and pastors who are present, to our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, and specifically to this bereaved family who is like family to me. I am not going to get the bell, <laughs> but I want to say one thing quickly, and that is I want a short funeral just like this one. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, the psalmist says. In the book of the Revelation, it says, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and that their deeds do follow them. I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm going to do exactly what uh, Brother Wardell would want done right about now, and that is tell you a story. I uh, wanted a fresh story for the day, so I went to the internet, and I searched long and hard till I saw something that Paul Harvey told years ago. He talked about a friend of his, the Reverend Harry Pritchard Sr., or Jr., rather, who was the rector at the All Saints Episcopal Church in Atlanta. In the All Saints Episcopal Church, they had a myriad of ministries early on before lots of our churches ever had them. They had ministries for the poor and the disenfranchised. They had ministries for college students and they had ministries for people with special needs. He pointed out a young boy by the name of Philip. And Philip was nine years old in the Sunday school class of eight year olds. Not only was he not a part of the group fully because of their attitudes toward him because of his age, but Philip had Down syndrome. His facial characteristics and his slow responses set him apart from everybody in the group. One Sunday after Easter, the Sunday school teacher gathered some of those little plastic eggshells and passed it out to the class and told them, what I want you to put in these eggs is a symbol of new life. So the children gathered their eggshells and they went on their way and they came back on the designated day. Some of them came back and they opened the eggs and there were flowers. One had a seed. Another had uh, a butterfly and one little boy who was just trying to be funny had a rock. The teacher finally got to the last egg and he opened it up and inside there was nothing. The class responded, that's not fair. This child didn't do the assignment. Pulling at the teacher's coattail was Philip. And Philip said, that's my egg. He says, it's empty because they found the tomb empty. <laughs> and because of the empty tomb, I've got new life. He gained the respect of everybody in the classroom. And what happened shortly after that was that Philip got an infection. And he passed away. On the day of his funeral, a group of eight-year-olds, third graders, marched down the aisle, and they did not march down the aisle with flowers to put on little Philip's casket. They walked in with empty eggshells. I started to bring an empty eggshell 
And then I realized there was going to be an empty shell here already. <laughs> Lewis Benjamin Cookie Coogie Waddell is not here. But he left us an empty shell. He's somewhere where there's no more sickness. No more pain. No more suffering. No more sorrow. No more struggles. No more trials. No more tribulations. No more problems or perplexities where he is right now. He's left us with an empty shell. We're going to the cemetery after this and we're going to lay this empty shell in the ground. But the symbol of resurrection needs to ring in your ears and in your minds. Because one of these days, the dead in Christ shall rise. One of these days when he comes back to get us. Don't do that. One of these days, we're going to all be caught up to meet him in glory. God bless you, Waddells. He left us a legacy. There's a lot to live up to. There's a lot to live for. Now live in such a way that makes God and Brother Waddell proud. Just love. 
Amen. No, nobody but a Lewis Wardell can get a Chester D.T. Ball. <laughs> Amen to come and sing on a day like this. What, what a wonderful day this is. Uh, God, God has literally smiled on all of us when he allowed... Uh, Deacon Lewis Wardell to come into our midst. That was God's way of smiling on us. All that has been said today from the very start, even to right now, has uh, really let us know the kind of person that was in our midst. It is a sad thing that some people never recognize greatness until it's gone. But, 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 but we saw greatness and we recognized that Lewis Wardell was great. Before we go any further, let's give this wife a hand. Amen. Brenda Wardell is somebody y'all. Amen. 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 Love, Sister Wardell. Uh, I love this Wardell family. Amen. I love all of them. And I thank God for Sister Wardell because whenever you saw Brother Wardell, you would see Sister Wardell. They gave me the privilege to uh, do their renewal of vows. Fifty years. Amen. They let me do their renewal of vows. And I was excited about that. I was excited about the pictorial that Lisa and Christy and Chris had put together showing brother and sister Wardell. Remember what Chris said at that 50-year renewal of vows. He said, 
Mama, Daddy had to marry you because he saw those big thighs. I ain't never forgot that. <laughs> and say, say when he was when he would come in the gym and they'd be hollering, "Kooky, kooky, kooky!" and and Brenda was a majorette was stepping that thing. Yeah. yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I believe that Brother Wardell was an example to us. He really was an example. I, most, most people, when they get ill, they will opt not to come to church or anything. But Brother Wardell would come to church, and even if it was cold inside, he'd put an overcoat on, his gloves, and a hat on his head. And he'd sit right over there every Sunday. And he wouldn't leave for anything. And after Sunday service was over, he'd come up to me and tell me that that was a good sermon. The last time I saw Brother Wardell here was during our Christmas program. And he wanted to be here. His daughters were singing. And his grandchildren were on program. And he wanted to be here for them. He came and he sat second row from the back. I went back there and I talked with him. And that was the last conversation he and I had until I went to the hospital. And I was talking to Christy and Lisa and Chris and Brenda and we were discussing some of the friends were there and Jason was there we were discussing about though the outward man perishes the inward man is being renewed day by day and uh, Lisa shared with Christy and everybody else that was there what uh, Brother Wardell's request was he was ready to go home I said, that shows you that the outward man does perish, but the inward man is being renewed day by day because only a strong man in the faith can say, I'm ready to go home. And he said, I was ready to go home. And Brother Wardell stayed almost non-responsive while I was there. And when I got ready to leave, Sister Wardell said, Pastor, he opened his eyes. He's looking at you. I turned around, and the first thing he did was this. I walked back over to him, and I said, Brother Wardell, you my man. <laughs> Amen. There were several pastors that wanted to be here today. They couldn't. They called me, uh, Sister Wardell, and wanted me to pass the sentiments on to you. Pastor Dennis Jones from Gethsemane couldn't be here because he had a service. But there are an awful lot of pastors here, and Brother Wardell loved pastors. So I'm going to ask that all of these pastors would stand. We have the moderator from the Independent here, Pastor Wallace. We have Pastor Bird, uh, Lacey here, Guy Edie Burgess. Uh, Pastor Manson B. Johnson. Amen. I mean, Pastor Ray Washington. Pastor Emeritus D.R. Jefferson. Amen. We have Pastor Roy Jackson. We have the twins back there. Amen. And many, many other pastors that. Huh? Pastor, John, Pastor Johnny Davis. Johnny Davis got a haircut. Huh? Amen. That's, I didn't know who that was. Pastor Johnny Davis. Amen. I, I, I thank God. Pastor Dave Roberts and Pastor Cal Carlos Washington up there. Amen. Amen. I thank God for all of these pastors being here. You have been a wonderful audience this day. Amen. You have sat through all of the service and you sat through because of Deacon Lewis B. Wardell. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm not going to tax you. I always say this, that if I am given the privilege to pastor a person, then I can find that person in Scripture. Sister Wardell was sitting in my office the other day. She said, Pastor, I got one question. Did you find Cookie in the Scripture? <laughs> 
I say, yeah, I, I, I found him in the scripture. And I want to share this with y'all. When, when you get home, there, there are two scriptures that, I, that I, I really want to give you. I'm not going to deal with both of them, but there are two scriptures. In First Chronicles, in First Chronicles chapter 11, verse 10, it says something about the mighty men of David. Says something in First Chronicles chapter eleven verse ten. It talks about the mighty men of David, who God gave to David to help him make a difference in the kingdom. Second Samuel chapter twenty three calls one of those mighty men names. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 23, it says, ben Aya, ben Aya. And when I thought about this service and thought about Brother Louis Wardell, he was the ben Aya to Pastor Danny Davis. I, I, I am convinced that ministry is not a one man's operation. I, I, I'm convinced even if I came into the ministry thinking that the minister could do it all by himself, I soon discovered that that was a falsehood. Ministry is not a one man's operation, but I really believe that God gives us people who have skill, who have ability, who are gifted and talented, and they are given an assignment by God to carry out his goal. I, I believe that ministry is not a one person responsibility but ministry is made up of a lot of individuals individuals who are gifted individuals who are talented they are skilled they are people with ability that work toward a common goal he literally gives you men that help make a difference I, 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 I I know a little bit about God. And that little bit that I know about God is that when God establishes a ministry, God puts his own team together. Uh, you, you, you can't handpick who you want to handpick. If it's God's ministry, God puts his own team together together and, and y'all what I've discovered about being on God's team is like being on any successful team is that you have to answer one question and that one question Sonny is who is the most important person yeah y'all y'all missed that I, I mean if you're going to be on a successful team you have to determine who is the most important person? It's amazing when we, we live in a city where we have the famous rockets. We have the famous Texans. We have the famous Astros. We have the famous Cougars. <laughs> we have the famous Cougars. I, 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 I mean, and it's amazing when you start asking people who is the most important person on their team. The answers will vary. If you ask them about the Texans, some will say Deshaun Watson, the quarterback. Some will say Hopkins, the wide receiver. Some will say J.J. Watts. 
Some will say number 90. Clowny. It, it goes on and on. That, that's their assessment of who the most important person is on the team. And the reason they give you that assessment of who they believe is the most important person on the team is because they are viewing things from outside of the huddle. Y'all missed it. They, 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 they are viewing it from outside the huddle. But if you want to know who the most important person is on the team, you got to come in the huddle. Y'all, yeah, yeah, when, 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 you, when, you, when you come in the huddle, you won't have the quarterback saying he's the most important. You won't have the running back saying he's the most important. You won't have the receivers saying they are the most important. But they that are in the huddle will say everybody in here is important. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that everybody in Jordan Grove was important and Lewis Wardell was sure enough important. Did y'all hear what I said? He has some skills, he has some abilities, he has some talent that had nobody else had. He was important, but if you talked with him, he would tell you that he wasn't the most important. Everybody. Sure, sure wish I had some help in the house. You, you know, some folks can't be good team players because they think that the ball stops with them. They, they can't be good team players because they think that everything rises with them and sets with them. But when you are a real good team player, you will discover that everybody... Y'all really don't, but let me say it like that. I need you and you need me. We need each other. When you are a good team player. And, and, and Brother Lewis Wardell was a good team player. He recognized. Anthony, that everybody was important. He was my Ben Aya. He, 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 that's who he was. So, so I, I know y'all call him Lewis Wardell. Y'all call him Lewis Benjamin Wardell. And I didn't even know that y'all, he had a middle name, Benjamin. Y'all call him Louis Benjamin Wardell, but I call him Louis Benaya Wardell because he helped me make a difference. Three things stand out about Benaya. Uh, when y'all read it in, in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 23 you will discover that three things stood out about him, and this is Cookie Wardell to me. The Bible says that ben went down and slew two lion-like men from Moab. Y'all missed it. It says that he went down and slew two Lion like men from Moab. Okay, okay, let me see if I can help you. When I think about Lewis Wardell, he reminds me of Ben Aya because he didn't let nothing intimidate him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, at his best, I, I mean, even on tiptoes, he was probably 5'7". I, I mean, he was a little fella, but he didn't let nothing intimidate him. He didn't care how tall you were, how big you were, how fast you were. He didn't let nothing intimidate him. Even when it came to standing 
on the word of God. He didn't let nothing intimidate him. You could say what you want to say, but when he got through with you, you know that you couldn't intimidate him. You could be out there on the corner with a bean pie. Y'all ain't saying that. You could be out there a Muslim with a bow tie. Y'all ain't got no you can, you can have a bow tie on, but when Louis Wardell got through with you, you would change your bow tie and your bean pie and, and all of that other stuff and become a Baptist, y'all ain't saying that, because he didn't let nothing intimidate him. Some folks are scared when folks just look at them. Brother Black, they just scared. I mean, that, that you, you look at them and it cowers them now. But the more you looked at Brother Lewis Wardell, he'd look back at you. I, 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 mean, I mean, it was something about him. He was like Ben Aya. He didn't let anything intimidate him. He didn't let no man no woman, no doctrine, no beast intimidate him. Something else it says in that text when you get home, Second Samuel chapter 23, it says that he went down and he slew two lion-like men. But it also said he went down to a pit on a snowy day and slew uh, a lion. I, I, didn't, I didn't make that up. Look at it when you get home. He, he, he went out on a, to a pit on a snowy day. On a, not, on a, not on a sunny day, but on a snowy day. Not, 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 not uh, on the streets, but in a pit and slew a lion. Which means not only did he not let anything intimidate him, but he was able to adapt to any situation. <laughs> Y'all missed that right there. I, 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 I mean, some folks say, wait till it gets a little warmer. Wait till it gets a little bit uh, 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 sunshiny. Wait till the clouds break. But Brother Wardell, he would adapt to every situation. He had the ability to adapt. He wasn't rigid. He didn't come in and try to force stuff on you. He was kind of like Paul on Mars Hill. He would literally find some common ground. I, I wish I had somebody. You know, Paul was waiting to catch a ship and go somewhere, and he stumbled up on this Mars Hill, and at Mars Hill they had a lot of gods that they served, and, and they had statues of all kinds of God, and, and, and Paul was stirred in his spirit, and the Bible say he went up, and when he saw uh, how they were uh, honoring these other gods, and he knew that he he served the true and living God. He says, I, per I, I, I perceive that you are su uh, religious folks and you are superstitious and you are very superstitious. You don't want to miss no God. So you even put a monument up here to the unknown God. Can I tell you about this unknown God? You, you say you don't know the unknown God, but the unknown God is the God who spoke a world in to existence and he didn't do it with his hands he just spoke it and rivers came forth and mountains popped up and birds started flying and, and eels started flying and cats started meowing and dogs started barking and cows started mooing this, this unknown this, this, this unknown God he was able to adapt to any Situation, yeah. but can I go home on this one? Yeah. Not, 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 not only was he not intimidated by anything, not only was he able to adapt to any situation, 
But when you get down to the last verse, it says that he was more honorable. I, I sure wish I had some Bible readers in him. He was more honorable than the other mighty men. Even though he didn't obtain to the other mighty men, he was more honorable. What, what, what are you saying? I'm saying he simply remembered, y'all. Yeah, y'all, 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 man. That's what I love about Brother Wardell. He remembered where he came from. He remembered he came from Spanish camp. He remembered he went to T.L. Pink. He remember y'all ain't saying. He remembered that he was Christian's baseball coach. He remembered that he was a member of John Grove Missionary Baptist Church. He remembered that he had a relationship with God. He remembered who he was. He carried himself like who he was. But not only did he remember who he was, but he remembered whose he was. Yeah, y'all. Y'all missed it. Maybe one of the reasons y'all can't get excited today is because you don't know who you are. He knew he belonged to the God who made the heavens and the earth. He knew that he had a place to go. He knew that Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house or men and mansion. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. He knew who he was. He knew to be absent from the body. Present with the Lord. Yes, sir. He knew that some glad morning, when this life is over, that he was going to find wings and fly away. And since you know he's gone home to be with his father, you ought to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm through.